Welcome back to yet another Kruger adventure. My name's Leon, thanks for watching and joining on my adventure. It's my pleasure and privilege to show you more about the greatest place on earth, the Kruger National Park. We are on a mission to discover Kruger's rich history and Pretoria's Copres Camp is the best place to start. It is the oldest camp in Kruger National Park. The area around Pretoria's Cop is deep in history. We are staying here for a few days and will be exploring the area. We will follow in the footsteps of the first tribe, the hardy pioneers who made a living in the area, to the formation of Kruger and the first years of Pretoria's Cop being a race camp. This is our ticket to heaven. I booked on Wednesday evening at almost 12 o'clock and here we are on Saturday at Papini Gate. Get the move on. Uh, we've got about an hour left to get to camp and it takes about an hour, so not a lot of time left. Only a hundred meters from the Pabini Gate, you'll find the old Bassini ruins. At this spot, you're allowed to get out of your vehicle and have a look around. You can read a bit more about Kruger's cultural history, famous rangers and families like the Mavundlas, Magashulas and Nukunas. They lived in the area even after the forced relocations when the park was created. This is the first trading post in the low felt by Europeans. João Albacini was a Portuguese pioneer, the first European trader and elephant hunter to settle in the disease ridden low felt. He started this trading post in 1845. Between 1845 and 1860, he established various trading posts along the routes between the harbors and the inland mines and centers of ivory trade. It was Albacini that buried Willem Pretorius at the base of Pretorius Corp race camp.
Periscope is located in the southwestern corner of Kruger National Park, and it was the very first camp in Kruger to open its gates to overnight visitors. And just like the very first tourist to Kruger National Park, we are roughing it. Well, in today's standards. No aircon, only a fan, no kitchen, no bathroom, just two beds and a basin. That's <laughs> cool, huh? Can we rope them? Good morning, it's been a quiet morning so far, um, quite overcast and drizzly, it's actually quite welcome from massive heat to AV yesterday, so it's actually quite nice. After enjoying some rusks and coffee at Chitlavi Dam, we headed back towards camp and we did the gravel roads around camp. What a great decision this turned out to be. Manungu Hill was named after a local chief who lived here in the mid 1850s. He also ran a trading store and a livestock camp as part of the Albacini trade network. While we were waiting for the elephant roadblock to clear, we heard a little sparrow calling right next to us. But the sparrow turned out to be very uncooperative. Eventually the elephants moved off and we could pass them. I was quite happy to get a fleeting glimpse of the not so commonly seen common reed buck. Then, while sitting at the causeway, I noticed the movement on the far side of the bank. It was sable.
This little guy entertained us a lot. But all of a sudden, one of the adults decided to chase us away. We got six sable and a common reed buck. It's my first time seeing a reed buck in this area and only my third time seeing sable in Kruger. So magic. Only after looking back at my photos at camp, I noticed that one of the sable was chewing on a bone. This is called osteophagia and it supplements their diet with calcium and phosphorus. Now it's breakfast time. After breakfast, it was time for a swim. We followed the sable walking trail to the swimming pool. There are a few signposts with interesting facts along the way. The famous ranger Harry Volito, who survived the lion attack, was stationed at Pretoria Scorp. During the 1920s, Ranger Volito held his staff meetings underneath this tree. Accordingly, the tree is known as the Indaba tree. The swimming pool was the first in Kruger and was built around natural rock. Heading back to our hut, we completed the trial. Another interesting fact is that during his time at Pretoria Scorp, Harry Volita planted alien plants in the camp. Kruger National Park decided not to remove these species as part of the rich history and nostalgic influence that Harry Volita has on the Pretoria Scorp race camp. In pursuit of their vision of political autonomy in the interior, the foot trackers moved away from British influence and administration in the coastal area of Cape Town. Between 1836 and 1860, groups of foot trackers investigated various possible routes through the low fell to the Portuguese harbours in Mozambique in an effort to establish trade. Pretoria's Cop Race Cap lies near one of these trade routes, and it takes its name from a nearby hill where the foot tracker Willem Pretorius is buried. The shop is well stocked and we managed to find the coolest baboon in Kruger.
Before the afternoon drive, we went to Skakuza via the Napi Rock and came back on the S1 road. I didn't keep track of time and all of a sudden I realized that I had to drive at the speed limit. Otherwise we will not be able to get to camp before the gates close. We weren't able to see much and I had to skip the mass cattle grave and the grave of Chief Neon Guy. These two had something else on their minds, and that was not crossing the road in a hurry. They didn't seem to be concerned that they were slowing us down, or have any shame about their act of public indecency. Luckily, we made it by the skin of our teeth. The guard at the gate gave us a friendly warning with big eyes and a finger pointing to his watch as we drove by. The Four Tracker Road was used before the existence of Kruger National Park. It was built in 1849 as a trade route from the interior to modern day Maputo in Mozambique. 
It took the early transport riders a couple of weeks to complete this journey from Pretoriaskop to modern day Maputo. One of the most famous travelers on this road was the dog Jock of a Bushveld. His story was written by his master Sir Percy Fitzpatrick and even movies have been made of this adventurous and courageous little dog who lived in this harsh and untamed area. This is the spot where Jock was born. It's just off the Fort Tracker Road. For male baboons, life can be tough. Moving up the hierarchy isn't easy, and the fights for dominance can be violent, and injuries are not too uncommon. That ship mountain in the back. It's not completely visible today because of all the mist. This landmark used to be a beacon for navigation in the area. It is so called because of its likeness to an overturned ship's hull. What an amazing sight, these two cheetahs seem to be on a territorial patrol. Luckily for me they stayed right next to the road and I reversed for more than 2 kilometers following them.
I noticed that their body language started to change. For some reason, they started to get quite nervous. I wondered if they had sensed that something dangerous might be close. But then I saw the signpost. Cheetahs use these man-made signposts as a means of communication by marking their territories and warning off others. Therefore, the signposts will increase the likelihood of encountering any rivals. You could see that they were inspecting the bush telegraph thoroughly. Note the old droppings on top of the sign. I really hoped that they would jump on the signpost, but no luck for me. I will just have to wait a little bit longer to get my bucketless shot of a cheetah on a signpost. What an awesome sighting! My best cheetah sighting ever! Along the Fur Tracker Road, you'll find a few more marked historic points of interest. Usually the animal sightings around Pretoriaskop aren't as plentiful as in other parts of Kruger. That's due to the surrounding Saarfeld. However, the area is home to some of the rare Kruger antelope. A few years ago we saw the Liechtenstein's Hartebeers on the Fuhr Tracker Road. There are only a handful of these antelope left in Kruger. The earliest inhabitants of this area were the San Bushmen. There are quite a few rock art sites within Kruger, some of them dating back 3000 years ago. The majority of these paintings are found in the area to the south of the Fuhr Tracker Road. You will have to book the Bushmen's Wilderness Hiking Trail to see these. The Afsal picnic site has been built to resemble a typical trading store of the transport rider era.
afternoon, last drive. Heading out to Shabeni Hill, let's see what we can find. And now for the Fai loop. Fai Fai loop. With an air of dread hanging as it was last morning in the park and we still haven't seen any lions, leopards or wild dogs, we decided to do the S65 road. This road has been great in the past for me and it's one of my favourite roads in Kruger. We just got in time to see these wild dogs jump up and run away. Oh well, still better than seeing nothing at all. Only a few seconds with him have made my trip.
The first animals we saw when we entered the park was giraffe. And now, fittingly, it is also the last. That's it. The end of yet another Kruger trip. I think our visit to the Pretoria Scoperace camp actually summed up the area actually quite nice. Wildlife sightings, not that great. Big five sightings, meh. But when you do get a sighting, you know it's going to be a special one.